I have to say this, Mr. Race gave respect and he earned the respect that he has now. There's no question in my mind about Thank that, you. sir. Thank you. Take us through your mindset. May 24th, 1973, Kansas City, pretty much where you spent the early years in your life, winning the NWA World Championship for the first time. Actually, in the ring, I don't think I could, I could explain it. Uh, it was something that anyone in my position at that point in time, that was the one thing that they all wanted. It's the one goal that they were all trying to achieve. And when it happened, the reaction of those people for the, let me back up just a little bit. Until that happened, everybody in, in that town and anything around there all hated me. But that m magical moment flipped it the other way and it just it just went on from there. Uh, now that, at that was point, kind of a short-lived one yeah. the first time around. But Dory Funk Jr. and you were both heels at this time, were you not? Yes, we were. Was that rare uh, at the time to have heel versus heel title matches? Because you don't see much of that in every, 2009, at least. Depending on where you were back then and who the who the two people were, uh, they knew that virtually I couldn't be beat in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. And they're bringing in the guy, the only guy that had won every time he'd been in Kansas City. So it was kind of like stacking uh, to a pinnacle. And when it happened, it was like somebody had plugged that building into uh, from a, a battery run something right into the electricity. It just popped. And Did I was it help? Thankful to be a part of it. Did it help the territory at that point with having the sure title that, change like that where they were so scarce back then? Sure that in does. Kansas City? Sure it did. Uh, the champion comes into any place and he was there virtually for seven days. And for the next, that happened on a Thursday night and I came back there on the, fo the following Thursday. Mm -hmm against one of the guys that had all, you know, had been there for a long time, uh, Danny Little Bear. And the people were right back to disliking me. They were cheering uh, Little Bear, and we sold out again. Now, were you an owner of the territory at that point, or were you still just a, an no, active no, competitor? At that point, it was, I was right on the hinge of, of it. And, by that happening there kind of solidified me going in there on a permanent thing once that was over. As an active wrestler, what got you interested in actually buying into a territory while you were still competing? You didn't hear a heck of a lot of that back then. Well, it's always a lot better to be the guy controlling the money that's paying you as whatever you are, whether you're a cook or wrestler or whatever. It's easy, much easier if you control both sides of that. Mm -hmm. You kind of dictate your own pay then. Is that why you had your MWF debut back in June? <laughs> <laughs> in the ring, my thing. <laughs> Do you think it was right, the right time, where you were so hot at that point to drop the title? It was just about two months later to Jack Briscoe. <laughs> Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Lawndorf. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL and you're watching the MWF. Be there.